side note, I basically was so depressed that, um, you know, I was like, this is it. I went to Home Depot. I was crying in line. I bought duct tape and a garden hose. And, uh, you know, I tried to gas myself. I taped up my windows in my car, taped the garden hose up into my thing. Um, uh, when the ambulance found me, I was unconscious. They had to revive me on the side of the road. And you actually uh, tried it. You actually did it. Oh yeah. No, I did it. Yeah. I I was was, like, they said I was dead for like at least two minutes. And when they, what's up everyone welcome back to the young electrician podcast my name is ruben young aka the young electrician i'm here today again with my boy nico what's up nico what up aloha guys heck yeah i always say on this channel that um we like to see electricians grow not just in the field but also in their personal lives and that's kind of something we're going to talk about today today we're going to talk about mental health and construction i think it's uh something that's pretty ignored in the trades and i think it's definitely something that affects all of us it's something that affect my life and i I know it's something that affect nico's life and i really want to have this discussion with nico because he has some experience in this i have some experience in this neither one of us are mental health professionals so i just want to clarify that don't go see your doctor (laughs) go talk to go talk to professional but what we'd like to do today is we would like to just shed light on this and share some of our stories, share some of the things that we did to overcome it, some of the things we're doing now, uh, hopefully to kind of just shed some light on it and benefit some of you guys that are struggling, need some help, and just, uh, you know, just don't know what to do. Uh, So I do want to clarify that neither one of us are professionals, and I want to clarify what we mean by um, mental health. We're not talking about like some psychiatric issues. Again, neither one of us are professionals. We're talking about the the regular mental health that everybody deals with, the stresses, trauma of life that just weighs us down um, and really just affects us. It, it affects our work life. It affects our home life. It affects our relationships with our uh, spouses, our friends, our family, our children. So with that said, uh, Nico, anything you want to say to start off with before we hop into this? Um, well, uh, I think the first one to say is, uh, this is actually mental health month. So this is a perfect topic for today. And, um, you know, it's, we have, we have to look out for ourselves and I think our brothers in the trade. So this is, this is a great topic to talk about. And, um, you know, I've, I've had a lot of personal experience in this and I'm, going to get vulnerable and be willing to share with you guys some of the stories that I went through. And it's, it's not an easy thing. Um, you know, as men, we, we don't want to talk about, um, our feelings or what's going on with ourselves. And this could lead us down a very dark path because we actually need to be able to reach out and ask for help. And, um, knowing how we are and then that there is help out there you know we have insurance that's able to help us out um we have other brothers in the trade that have gone through these experiences um and you know we can we can benefit from this and and recover before we get to a point where it's almost too late and um so I guess, you know, let's start off with uh, the first question. What, 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 what are these things that cause um, mental health problems? And yeah, you know, I, I think a big one's kind of relationships, dude, with like um, your woman or your significant other. And um, yeah, when you're having problems at home, you know, with your girlfriend or your wife, and you're either going through like a breakup or a divorce or you guys are fighting at the moment you are not mentally prepared at work yeah. and that that can cause a lot of uh, one stress to other uh coworkers two you're not performing at your best ability and like you're kind of zoned out you're yeah. you're, not, you're not in the moment and this can be it it could really just kill you on the inside on just one you lose yeah. your job 
or you're 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 at that point where you're like dude i'm i want to kill myself because i just cannot handle these feelings anymore yeah yeah i think uh i think we don't realize how how much these negative emotions that come from these experiences in our personal life and in our work life could really affect us and weigh us down and just be that weight holding us down and Honestly, like it, it could affect our work, but I want people to know that it's not about performing well at work. That's not the only thing. Just to just to clarify, like uh, it is about your mental health, because I mean, even if you're able to perform well at work, but you're still, you know, quote unquote, dying on the inside and it's affecting the rest of your life. It's still not a good place to be in. Um, you could overcome that. You could get through that. So, Nico. Let me ask you what, and then I'll share too. This is going to be a discussion. This is not an interview. I'm welcoming Nico onto the show so that we can discuss this and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, bring something beneficial to you guys. Nico, uh, what is something that has happened in your life, either in your personal life or in your work life that has affected your mental health negatively? Um, so a few things actually, um, I'm I'm not very uh proud of like the things that I've done in my past, but I'm nor shame or I'm gonna hold guilt over myself because of them. Yeah. I've uh I've gone through a divorce. Um and when I was going through the divorce, I was heavy into drinking and using drugs. And because of this, um, you know, I wasn't thinking off of the best of um my abilities and being able to control my actions. And I was more to react than to be able to pause and reflect on the things that I needed to change. Um, you know, so one drugs and alcohol cause depression even more. It, it, it's a, it's kind of like a band aid for a minute, you know, you feel good, it, it helps drown away your pain and sorrows for, for that moment. And, but in the long run, it causes more harm than good. And, yeah. you know, I was, I was, I was upset. I was mad. Um, you know, my ex-wife had nothing to do with it. It was all my problems that I was causing of why we're getting divorced. So I couldn't blame anyone else. I could always point the finger um, but it was ultimately my reactions of how we were handling our situations. We were young. Um, we had a child. We were like trying to make it work. And I was choosing partying over that at that mm. moment. And then when shit hit the fan, I wanted to blame everyone else instead of looking at my own actions of being a bigger man and actually showing up when I needed to show up. Um that's just a little background story. So when it came down to it, I was using drugs and alcohol and, um, you know, I was angry. I was mad, um, very aggressive. And because of this, uh, one of the times she like came, she, she like got back with her old boyfriend, came and picked up my son. I was so upset and mad. What do I do? I went, uh, wanted to go drink again. And, uh, so I ended up going to the bar and, you know, I got blacked out drunk. And next thing I know, I ended up stabbing a dude in the neck with a beer bottle. And oh it, wow, it, yeah, I, I fucked myself up, dude. I, um, I was looking at a uh, seven years going upstate and, um, I, I went to jail that night and, um, because of that, I, was looking at um, assault with a deadly weapon, bodily fluid, um, attempted murder because of just the way the area that I stabbed him at. And uh, it was, uh, you know, like I can say it was self-defense because I was fighting two other dudes um, and the one guy got knocked out and then his buddy jumped in. And then that's when I ended up like breaking a beer bottle and hitting him. And, you know, I was, like, dude, that's not who I am now. Anyone who knows me, I'm very happy and go lucky. I was just like very 
in a dark moment. And, um, you know, I, I ended up going to jail for a week trying to figure out bail and what to do. And I remember my coworkers because I was working for a smaller company, dude, they're driving around looking for me because I didn't show up. to work. (laughs) They're knocking on my door, looking in the windows. Like they saw my car at the house and they just couldn't figure it out. And then, um, they actually called, uh, the courts and they figured out, but I got bailed out the day that they were calling in to try to get mm. me out. It was like such a blessing to know, like I have good friends that would show up for me and do that. And, um, uh, uh, it's funny as a <laughs> pinpoint electric, um, my buddy, Nick, he, he was actually my friend at that time that, um, yeah, looking for me. So a big shout out for Nick on that, and uh, yeah, he's he's gonna be on the podcast next month, dude. I oh yes, you, yeah. you got to talk to him. Perfect, dude. Yeah. So that's yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I'm like, tell us what Nico's really like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were troublemakers back then, so uh, we're doing a lot better now. I mean, it's good. Yeah. We all been there. <laughs> so let me ask you, how um. <laughs> so the, the the divorce definitely or the, the problems with your marriage definitely that's a huge weight right there emotional weight we don't understand the impact of emotional weight even when we go through it like we, we tend to like to forget things or put things in their little cupboards you know in our mind but that is a that is a huge i've never experienced it myself but i know emotional and mental strain and pain that has to be hard to go through i mean i've been through a breakup they're difficult um, yeah. but a divorce that's on a different level especially when you have a kid um but how did you hurting somebody else in this bar fight did that affect you mentally or emotionally or because that has to mess you up like getting into a fight beating somebody up is one thing but yeah. you know hurting somebody and having time to reflect on it i know yeah. for me it's hard thinking back on fights that i've been through where you know somebody got really hurt or something Not that I'm some great fighter, but, you know, everyone has their day. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, how did that affect you? Um, One, I'm not a violent person on, you know, it's uh, not who I want to be. And it was always, I've always kind of trained and done some kind of martial art or, like, want to stay fit. And it was always because of just to protect me myself or my son or my family you know in case of a a scenario that was going down Um, and and to be put in a situation where i'm causing damage of to someone that like he has his family and he was just out trying to have a good time and you know a bigger man would would have just been like you know what this is a, a i'm drunk i should go home or that, like, you know what, there's this situation and just walk away. A bigger man walks away and, and knows, uh, a wise man knows when to fight, you know, mm-hmm. especially one like to not lose the war. So basically, yeah, I won the battle, but I lost the war because yeah. dude, I ended up having a bunch of court charges, um, you know, facing going upstate. I ended up taking a plea deal and, um, you know, the the inner battles there were weren't fixed by the way because this story kind of continues a little bit further of i want to say just because i kind of figured out this situation and was able to move on my inner trauma because of wanting to be relationship wise i'm not being able to fix my inside of how i feel about myself it can it continued on and uh, it actually moved on to another kind of job where after the divorce and everything was done, I I didn't actually was able to fix what I was feeling inside the internal healing, basically. And this is why I like to say, if you're, if you're really hurting and need help, you should go seek out professionals, you know, find yeah. a a, a psychiatrist that can that can maybe help you walk you through all this go through therapy um you know some people need aa or na um maybe even a life coach you know oh and yeah so i i i don't know if you've 
had to experience going to uh, prison or jail, but you know, it's a, uh, yeah, you go in and you're reflecting on your life, but it's kind of, you kind of forget over time. I want to say it's kind of like, oh, yeah, dude, yeah. I, remember, I remember going in, but dude, it's a uh, you hard time for the first two weeks, but then you adapt and it's like, you, you not really fixing what, what was the, the real problem at the time. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of people's prison experience, cause I've been in prison. And a lot of people's prison experiences um, are very easy. I'm going to be honest, especially in, in California. Prison out here, unless you're on like the level three, level four yard, or you're on a really like, you know, active, violent yard, your prison experience is pretty cake, uh, cakewalk. It's it's like, a, besides, besides the fact that you're being told what to do and you have to strip down and, you know, <laughs> all that jazz. Besides that, prison here is easy. It's not like um, a, a lot of places around the world. And um, unless you're on like a level three or level four yard, higher level yard, but a lot of people's uh, prison experiences are chill. They realize like, hey, everybody just it's like high school, you know, Yeah, it's like a second childhood. You're just chilling with your friends and hanging out and there's cigarettes and drugs and people are making alcohol. And so it's, you know, you think it's a place where, oh, he's going to he's going to be sat down. He's going to have to do what they say and he's going to learn from this. But no, dude, like, I don't know why. What, what about it? But it is almost designed to keep you in that bad place and not allow you to grow. And I had to choose, man, you know, when I was locked up, I was 18 years old and, you know, I was 18 years old and I went upstate and uh, when I was in reception, I had to decide right there. My bunkie, he was a dude, uh, old timer. He was doing 35 years, just got his sentence. And um, he told me, he's like, look, dude, he's like, you could either be active you know, I was reading the Bible at the time because when I was 16, I, you know, started trying to go to church, trying to read the Bible because I was just strung out on drugs. But he told me, he's like, look, you could either pick up the Bible and read that or, you know, you could keep being a knucklehead, but you can't do both. Nobody's going to respect you. And once I got to the main yard, I realized, wow, like that's serious. Like I see all these guys that pick up a Bible and it's because they're scared. It's not because they want to change. Like I, I was trying to change before I went to prison. I was just strung out on the drugs, <laughs> um, you know, but it's, it could be a cakewalk going to prison here. It's not, you know, somebody says I've been to prison. It uh, doesn't make you tough, man. doesn't make you tough. There are some weak people in prison and you know, there's, they're, they're no tougher than the day they got locked up when they, when they get out. So yeah, you have to choose when you're in there, how you're going to utilize your time. Are you going to better yourself or are you going to just, go right back into that trap into all that you know mess that was your life before you got locked up a little side story on that i remember talking to a dude that was in there and um it was you know i asked him i was like hey dude when you get out what do you want to do and and it was crazy to me or the insanity is that he wanted to go back out and do the exact same oh, yeah. thing that he got in trouble for and he's like you know what this this is all I know. And this is my life. And um, it's nice. crazy. I'm like, yeah, I was like, dude, you, you could go sign up for like junior college or some free classes and, or get into a trade and like change your life. And yeah. it was, it was sad of like, this is the mindset that some people have going in there. And um, I think that is a problem with the mental health. We don't realize is, I mean, we don't realize how our lives affect us growing up, our upbringings, because, you know, like if you have a hard upbringing and you make it through it, you're just like, oh, I'm just a strong person. Yeah, you made it through it, but you don't know how that affected you. And a lot of times people will think, well, you know, when I was young, we had it tough, but we made, you know, we turned out all right. But then they're taking it out on their kids they're taking it out on their wives they're taking it out on their coworkers, their employees, everybody else. You know, they're making their the weight of their emotional trauma when they were a kid, whatever they went through, other people's problems. So of course you could deal with it because you're not carrying the weight of it. You're putting it on other people in your actions. Um, but I, I'm actually getting sidetracked. So some people, they can't change because they don't know any better. When I was young, dude, I never thought I'd own a car. I never thought I'd have a job. Like I was raised, I always used to joke around when I was a youngster that I was raised by a pack of wild gang members. So, you know, somewhere in West LA, because, you know, a lot of my peers were gang members. I've, I've seen a lot of stuff when I was young. So as a 
12, 13 year old kid, I never thought I'd own a car. I never thought I'd have a license. I just figured I'd steal a car. Uh, you know, I figured I'd just sell drugs. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't get a job. I would sell drugs, but this was my mindset. And once I started hitting like my eight, like 17, 18 years old, I really felt like a loser because I was like, well, like I'm trapped here. I'm, this is who I am. I, I can't be anything else. And, you know, it took the grace of God, learning truth in the Bible and positive people that looked at me. And even though I was this gang member, even though I was this, you know, this whatever young idiot that looked at me and said like, no, you can change. You can do something different. But, you know, that guy you met in, when you were incarcerated, a lot of people, they don't have that knowledge. And you can't do what you don't know. And that's a, that's a sad that's a sad reality. Yeah. Um, two points I wanted to like just jump off of you on that is, uh, you know, with with the trauma and uh, whatever they're kind of going through on how your upbringing is. A lot of people are upset and mad. And like, you know, like that's where like bullying on the job site kind of comes in. Yeah. Where uh, someone's so mad and upset about how their life is that they're making their uh you know, apprentice's life, a living hell. Yeah. They just hate themselves so much that they, they have to throw out that hate in some way or just make the other coworkers life a living hell. So knowing that one, it's kind of having acceptance of how other people's react, but at the same time, you got to have a level of respect where it's just like, dude, if this is out of hand, you need to be able to tell that person like, that's enough or I'm not working with you, find, oh, yeah. uh, you know, quit your job to go find a better job to, to work in a better, healthy environment. But because if you're unhappy while you're working, you know, you're, you're, you're really just giving yourself the short end of the chain. Oh yeah. I actually, uh, I got a couple episodes that I'm working on um, that are going to try to address that because one, again, you don't know what you don't know. And somebody's going to stay in their position because one, they're, they're afraid. They have these mental blocks. They're afraid that they're not going to be able to get another job. Right. I mean, you had that, right? Like if I leave this company, this other company, what if I'm not good enough? What if I get laid off? What if something happens? And the devil we know is better than the devil we don't know sometimes. So they have that mental block. And then another thing is some people just think like, well, this is the way life is. This person is treating me maybe the same way my dad treated me, the same way my mom treated me, the same way my in-laws treated me, whatever it is. So it's like they're used to that abuse. So they they never get the chance to have any freedom or leave that company. But I'm working on a couple of episodes kind of just talking about boundaries and how to create them, what healthy boundaries are. Uh, kind of just working through some of those mental traps. The, but, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut up and let you finish your points. No, well, that, that is a good point because of, you know, um, one, I want to say there's the fear of the unknown. So, you know, yeah. instead of having those healthy boundaries, people have this fear of like, oh, this is just how it is and yeah. you know, people should interact. Um, maybe that their family life is the same way. And then they just have this acceptance of like, oh, this is how I've been treated my whole life. So it's yeah. okay. That, like, I still get treated this way instead of being able to how it all um that sucks differently sad right very sad on um, but you know you guys can change this this is not how you have to be um you know i wanted to go into two is um you know we we get sad and depressed when we see all these other people um excelling sometimes and we have the yeah. fear of change because i'm comfortable but, you know, we, we get depressed when we're on Instagram and we're seeing all these other guys succeed and doing well. And they might have all the girls or something. But, dude, comparison is a thief of all joy. If I am yeah. comparing myself to somebody else, I I am stealing all this happiness because I'm like, dude, I should be there. And I'm getting upset and I'm frustrated. And reality is, dude. When we're doing life, dude, we are all on a different racetrack. And their track might be straight there, but ours goes all the way around. Oh, yeah. But eventually, we we get to our destination if we make sure to make a point of, this is my goal. This is how I'm going to execute it. I'm going to do X, Y, Z. And 
I have I have to just know that where I stand is not going to be the same as anyone else's. So yeah, that so, was, that was a big problem for me for sure. Is uh, oh heck yeah, yeah. No, I don't that's... know. <laughs> you guys know my brother's a pro surfer, so oh, you should have been an electrician. Gosh, I feel like on his uh, YouTube and tell him that like you should have been an electrician like your brother. Uh, dude, you want to be a famous uh, surfer? Dude. He, he had a hard time reading a tape measure, so I don't know if he would ever make That's it. That's hilarious. I, I can't read a tape measure. I'm just going to be a pro surfer. And say, yeah. Yeah, I guess. Oh. Uh, and, you know, it's like, I would always be like, dude, he's traveling the world, surfing the best places. And, you know, um, I had to do some internal healing, and I couldn't be yeah. more proud of my brother at where he's awesome. at. And, so so for all his accomplishments that he's done and i'm i'm very proud to be like his brother and it, it's awesome. funny because he throws out like dude if it wasn't for you i wouldn't be where i'm at and i'm just like sometimes i'm like i don't know dude Think you you look at you like i don't want to be like that guy and i was playing <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly that was that was the motivation oh yeah it's a good motivation no oh uh, that, that's good man um before we get into some of the solutions that we talked about, I'm just going to share just a bit about some of the, unless you had another point you wanted to make on that. No, dude, uh, please continue. I like hearing your story. <laughs> oh, yeah, I had a conversation, man. This is why I, I mean, worked at, and I didn't know any of these things about you. It's not that I don't pay attention to you when you're talking either, because, you know, we talked about a lot of things, dude. We talked about a lot of things on the job site. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's just so much to our lives that, you know, takes a long time to unpack. I, I'm Hopefully. a man of mystery, dude. Man oh, of man of mysteries. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Podcast material. I like it. No. Um, one thing for me is I I had a lot of trauma from growing up that I didn't know about. A lot of, like, a lot of stuff I didn't realize until I got married, right? Mm -hmm. Because for me, I'm, I didn't realize I was in survival mode in life. I was always in survival mode. And whenever I messed up or something happened, I could deal with it, take care of it, and move on, right? My mistakes, I could just deal with them, sweep them under the rug, and move on. When you're married, <laughs> you know, when you make a mistake, you just kind of sweep it under the rug. Your wife's just looking at you, right? Or your spouse is looking at you like, are we going to talk about this? <laughs> I wasn't planning on it, you know? And so, I, man, I love my wife. She's awesome. And... Um, we had a lot of difficulties uh, when we first got married and a lot of it came from our own childhood uh, stresses and trauma and, you know, emotional baggage and weight. Uh, but together we've been learning to work on that stuff. And for me, I didn't realize until like two, three months ago that I actually have like a lot of anxiety. And I didn't realize this because for me, it's, I've been on fight mode. I've been on fight or flight mode my entire life, and I didn't realize it, but my, my wife could see it, right? You know, other people could see stuff in us that we don't see. For me, it's natural. It's like, yeah, this is the situation that's at hand. I need to take care of it now, you know? And after she kind of told me, she would tell me for, for a while, like, hey, you have anxiety. I'm like, I don't have anxiety, right? Because for me, an anxious person is some weak person that's scared. And I didn't realize, like, oh, everybody's scared everybody's scared of something. I'm just maybe better at hiding it in front of people. That That's and, also the man stigma, bro, of, like, not wanting to talk oh, yeah. about it or admit it. Yeah. Because, you, you know, I read a book called, um, I think it's called Wild at Heart, and it's about, um, is it Wild at Heart? I don't know Wild at Heart, or uh, something like that. No, it was another book. I can't remember the name. But anyways, in this book, uh, the guy talks about being a man. And he says that most people don't most people don't learn how to be a man. They, they've never learned what does it mean to be a man. So we pretend like we're men. And we fight everything that tries to oppose that or expose it. Anything that tries to expose that I'm not the man that I should be, I'm gonna fight against. Family, friends, everything. And that really impacted me. Um, but my wife telling me about this anxiety thing and us having long walks and, you know, deep conversations, right? Um, 
uh, through our difficulties, I thought about it and I really worked through what does it mean, you know, to have anxiety. And then I realized like when me and my wife are fighting, I immediately my anxiety goes up. And some days at work, like I'll just have this depression and I'll have this anxiety, but I couldn't put my finger on it. I just felt like, man, something's wrong and I have to fix it. I didn't realize that my emotional and mental response to it, anxiety and depression, weren't good. I just thought, well, that's just, you know, something's wrong. I have to fix it. And this is how you feel when you have to fix something wrong. But it's not. The cool thing is I learned, well, I shouldn't be, I'm going into the next portion. So I'll just say this one thing and I'll move back no, to the actual story. Going, dude. But I learned that um, since, I, since I can name it, I know it's anxiety. Immediately, as soon as I was able to name it, I was able to deal with it. And I went from, you know, a whole work day of just feeling anxious while doing my job, taking care of business, having this anxiety, having this depression, to being able to just, I guess, ease out of it. Still have the problem, still have to deal with it. But when I realized, like, oh, this is just a mental thing, it's not actually happening. It's just my mental and emotional response to this thing. And it's unhealthy. It's unhealthy for me to be anxious. So, you know, um, I would just pray, say, God, give me the, you know, give me the strength to overcome this anxiety and work through this. And I will feel good. I still have to take care of whatever the problem is that was causing it. When I was able to name the anxiety and realize it was anxiety, I was able to start to realize, okay, well, what's causing that anxiety? But we're gonna have to come back to that because I'm getting ahead of ahead of where we're at. So yeah, I'll talk about some I, that later. identifying the problems. One of the the biggest things that we we need to go over today. So that's, that's troubleshooting our lives. That's what we should call this troubleshooting our lives. <laughs> um, we'll start an electrical uh, therapy. Yeah, ministry, pull out the counseling. meter so we can see how much our anxiety <laughs> level is at right now. <laughs> that's hilarious. But for me, a lot of my trauma started when I was young. My dad passed away when I was six. And apparently between the ages of five and eight, I barely realized this a few months ago too. Um, those are like years where a child actually thinks their parents aren't going to return. Children between five and eight years old have an anxiety and it's just a natural thing that when their parents leave for the market, for the, you know, for work, whatever it is, they're not going to return. And if your parent for some reason does not return and they die, they abandon you, that has huge emotional and mental implications and i didn't know that I, I could look back at my life and i could see the weight of that but i, I was actually going through 50 cents book uh hustle harder hustle smarter actually a really good book dude that was smart i actually um, want to read that that sounds like a rad reading dude it is good it is good he talks about his business stuff and his own life and you know but you know he lost his mom when he was around like six seven years old she was murdered and um and, you know, him going through therapy and realizing that it affects you harder when you're at those ages. Uh, you know, I read that and I was like, wow, my dad died when I was six. A lot of things make sense. And, you know, from that, uh, I just carried that weight. I kind of, I gave up on school. Six years old, gave up on school, gave up on caring about stuff. I just was just depressed. And I never had the proper therapy to work through those things. And my household a lot of people would argue a lot of people would fight I, you know i said i was raised by a pack of wild gang members <laughs> you know uh jokingly but yeah a lot of my my uh family were uh you know gang members or in that lifestyle and seeing people fight like physically fist fight not just family members but people coming to our house starting trouble and you know uncles and stuff going out and having to physically fight people or me and my brother having to physically fight people uh just where we're at growing up that holds up weight dude that holds weight. i'm trying to deal with this adult issue of my dad dying carrying that weight and just occupying space in my mind and i think that's something to know when you have trauma or just some mental weight that's taking up space in your mind your mind even when you're not thinking about it your mind is think mind is thinking about it because it's trying to process this in the background of your mind so it's taking it's taking up space in your mind trying to think about it, even when you're not thinking about it. So it's always this weight on your shoulder. But for me, having all these experiences and these, these difficult situations, these traumas, people arguing in my house, I was always on fight or flight mode. And I didn't realize 
that was some baggage I carried into my adulthood. I, uh, when I was 17, dude, I was just super depressed, just super depressed, strung out on drugs, super depressed. And it was around this time that my, my aunt actually, you know, shared the gospel with me and told me about Jesus and, you know, just what I needed to believe that Jesus died for my sins, that I was a sinner. And at that point I already knew it too, you know? Um, and I really wanted that, you know, I really wanted that, but all this baggage I was carrying, it, it doesn't automatically go away. You know, if you start going to therapy, if, you know, your life is changed and you're born again because you believe in Jesus, these things don't automatically just go away. You still have to deal with them. But in my mind, I thought, oh, I'm saved. Yeah, I'm saved if I could get off drugs. Drugs is my biggest problem. That's what I thought it was. Drugs was not my problem. Drugs was the symptom. It wasn't the yeah, problem. Yeah. It was the symptom. Yeah. That it, and, it inside, basically. And um, I, I wanted to ask, too, was the yeah. was because of like seeing your uncles kind of come in and uh, the violence and everything, was, was that something you kind of looked up to while you're going through all of this, too? Yeah, I'll tell you what I looked up to because I, I was never a violent person. I like, you know, me and my brother were pretty creative and my sister, we, you know, regular kids. And I was never some violent kid. But what I looked up to was the ability to protect the people you loved. Mm -hmm. And in the environment that I grew up in, I mean, normally that's a good thing. But in the environment I grew up in, it was very toxic. Because for me, everybody was the enemy. You know, everybody was the enemy. You don't know, you know, you don't know where the fight's going to come from. So, yeah, I did look up to it. And uh, to answer your question. But it was because I had that desire in this violent situation to be able to protect my family. Mm. Thank you for yeah. sharing, dude. I, I know this ain't easy to talk about sometimes. It's uh, so getting vulnerable is, is, is pretty rad. Um, you're able to do that. Yeah. I, I, I would hold that in till the end until uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I I had to go through some shit that finally I came to such a low point that I basically, I remember um, my family was like, Hey, do you want to get some help? And um, I was so broken and at the bottom that I was like, yes, I need help. Yeah. It's a good place to be a man where you're just like, yes, not everybody does that. They're like, Nope. Yeah. And uh, my story was very similar to yours of that drugs and alcohol were um, not what was wrong with me. What was wrong was the internal stuff that I needed to heal from. Th that was yeah. just a symptom of what I used to cope with. And um, yeah. it, it just drove me more into insanity because um, I would do the same shit expecting different results and yeah. it would plan out to be the same um some of the stuff to uh mental health month we we talked about was that you know suicide is a yeah. big one and that you know when it comes to drugs and alcohol because we become into this depressive state and that our lives and our traumas that everything that goes on we continue to go down this rabbit hole to a point where it's just like i've had enough and I yeah. can't deal with it anymore. And I want to kill, kill myself. myself. Yeah. Uh, my, my story was basically that. that. Like, like I said, I when I went through the divorce, I ended up getting, getting into another toxic relationship because I actually didn't heal what was inside of me. And I didn't, I wasn't able to, I didn't do therapy. I didn't do anything. All I did was that I, I went to jail, got some time off and that, just, just like, like how you're saying, saying it, it was stored in the back of my mind. Yeah. It just didn't, um, I, I didn't, didn't process it and I wasn't able to heal from, from it. So jumping into this next relationship, I did exactly the same shit, just with, with a different girl at this time. And um, this time, you know, I got sober for a little bit, but it was more of just because of the fear of going back to jail and courts and stuff. So I was able to like lean off for a little bit, but I think they call it like being a dry alcoholic, basically. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it's just like, I'm not really doing AA or anything. It's more of, I, I was just fear based. Um, and when, once I got back in that toxic relationship, I, I started to drink and use alcohol more. And when I became in that um, state of mind, um, 
I actually, I did, I did attempt suicide. One, I, uh, no. I overdosed on heroin and was needed to be Narcan. Wow. And the, the, the other time, um, I, I lost that connect. connect. I, 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 I mean, I could always find it, but I, I was starting to use uppers because I didn't want to be in that state of mind anymore. Side note, I basically was so depressed that, um, you know, I was like, this is it. I went to Home Depot. I was crying in line. I bought duct tape and a garden hose. And, uh, you know, I tried to gas myself. I taped up my windows in my car, yeah. taped the garden hose up into my thing. Um, uh, when the ambulance found me, I was unconscious. They had to revive me on the side of the road. And You actually tried it. You actually did it. Oh, yeah. No, I did it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, was, oh, wow. I was like, they said I was dead for like at least two minutes. And when they, they revived me, and I remember waking up in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I ended up having to, after I spent the night there, it was like almost two days. And then I ended up, they had to take the psych ward because uh, I was not in the right state of mind. Yeah. I was so depressed and broken. And, uh, you know, like I said, I had to be put to a certain point before I could actually ask for help. Um, I think the biggest point right now that I'm trying to tell people is that if you know you're sad and depressed, get help now. Don't wait till it's too late or like you actually attempt suicide or actually are able to like, you know, you might actually like, you might do suicide and actually die and you won't get this chance. So yeah. Um, you know, be aware of your coworkers too, bro. The ones that are quiet, that seem depressed and that they're going through something when normally they're like talkative and happy. Those are the guys you need to check in with or like kind of see what's going on. Yeah. Um, and then there's also the guys that kind of have the dark humor that laugh at, at oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. You're fucking That's trauma. <laughs> so bad inside, but in reality, yeah. you're, you're hurting. So. <laughs> Yeah, let me ask you, Nico, after that attempted suicide or, yeah, that attempted suicide. Yeah. How did you feel after when they, when you were revived? Was it, oh, thank God that didn't, I mean, immediately after, was it, thank God that didn't, that, that didn't go through, I don't want to die, I want to live? Or were you like, why the heck did you bring me back? Uh, it was a mixed emotions. I, I kind of want to say it was kind of both because my, my moods were fluctuating. Yeah. I was definitely, you know, at, at some points I was like, man, I wish I, I was still dead. And then the other moments was like, man, what have I done? Like the yeah. caused more harm to my family. I almost left my son, um, you know, my coworkers uh, <sighs> had no idea what happened to me. It was, uh, and ultimately inside I was just, I was more mad at myself that I just caused more damage than the damage that I've already caused. So, yeah. um, you know, so I got to stop beating up on myself about that stuff. And no. um, one of the biggest things about healing, about healing is, um, you know, don't be so hard on yourself. We're, we're near images of God. We're not perfect. We're meant to yeah. fail. And, and, God knows that. Um, being a man, you should know that failure is okay. Yeah. What makes us being a man is being able to like get back up and get back out there and try even harder to like get to our goals. Not suicide. Yeah. I mean, like, I get... <laughs> <laughs> but like to, to yeah, don't try better that ourselves. Either. Yeah. You know, no, it's true. The, the reason I asked that question was because I, you know, on YouTube, you can see these videos of people that have attempted suicide by jumping off of a bridge. And I highly recommend going and looking these videos up, especially if you feel depressed because they're so encouraging and inspiring because one dude, he jumps off this bridge. I, don't, I think it was like the Golden Great Big Bridge or some, some bridge you should have died, right? And his thoughts were immediately after jumping is, why did I do that? I want to live. Why did I do that? I want to live. And, you know, we could be in a place where we're so emotionally distraught and brought down that we want to cure it at any cost we want to cure it at any cost we got this weight and it's holding us down and we just want it off at any at any cost and we think sometimes that suicide could be an option just to end that suffering and that pain but you know a lot of times 
if we had the option after, it would be, no, there was another way to do it. This way, I don't get any second chances. So I'm definitely going to put a number for suicide hotline in the description uh, somewhere you guys could find. And if you guys, anybody watching this is suffering from anything, I mean, it could just be you going through a hard time in your marriage, you going through a divorce, whatever it is, don't feel weak that your situation isn't like Nico's or your situation isn't like something I went through. Your situation isn't worthy of being addressed because it's smaller, right? It's that that's there's no such thing as your situation smaller. So, you know, I think we like to compare our lives and think, well, I'm not, I don't have it that bad, you know? I'm not like starving, working in some, you know, looking for food and some scraps in some third world country, right? I got it pretty good, but that might be their issue, but you have your own issue. And for you, it's just as real and just as heavy as anybody else's situation. So if anything is going on with you, feel free to message us, email us, and we'll definitely try to point you in the right direction for sure. Again, we're not mental health professionals, but we do want to, you know, for anybody listening, add that help to you guys and kind of just direct you. But uh, yeah, Nico, that is that is yeah. deep, dude, but I'm, I'm glad you're here. Thank you. you know? Thank you. And, uh, you know, I used to be.